Well, good evening and welcome to Community Coffee Talk. My name is Tahir I. Kreshi. I'm your host tonight. The topic tonight is our effort to feed our community and uh, our youth playing a big role in helping charity work within our community. So it's a great honor for me to welcome Athar Aryan Amir, a youth Thank leader, you. and also Hiba Saraj. Thank you. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask Athar, introduce yourself, uh, your name, and what you do, and and then one minute uh, introduction by both of you, and then we'll talk about the community issues. Sure. Why? Well, uh, all right. Uh, my name is Athar Aryan Amir, and uh, I would say I'm a community volunteer, and I try to get involved in the community efforts whenever they're needed. Uh, currently, we're running a Halal Community Kitchen, and that uh, came in the to exist in the wake of uh, coronavirus and all the crisis we were going through at this time. So we thought that there was a big uh, gap um, uh, between uh, supplying and demand of food and especially in the shelters and food banks. Uh, so I personally believe that um, state is responsible for every citizen. And then if the state can make up for it, then we have a charitable organization and then we have a not-for-profit organization. And we saw there was a big gap uh, where some people who were not able to reach to food banks or the shelters uh, so they were suffering uh, due to uh, like, you know, having immobility. Uh, immobility could be for the reason of uh, being you know, uh, disabled, sick, or just having kids at home, uh, being a single parent. So we just thought that it'd be nice to bring some uh, hot, fresh cooked meals to their houses because they were in need of food. They were in need of taking care of disabled parents or younger children. And that's what we are doing at this moment. And at the same time, we ran another uh, uh, campaign as well. It's called Eat Toy Drive or Sari Toy Drive. Uh, we do it every year for the last several years uh, in which we collect toys uh, for our kids and shelters. And I, homes, yeah. all that. I, we're going to talk about those details. I need to yeah. just brief about you. Sure. And he's an entrepreneur. He runs lots of uh, okay. restaurant business. <laughs> and then we're going to go to the details about the topic. So, uh, Heba, can you tell us what are you doing uh, if you're studying university, you're doing community work? about yourself then okay. we'll go to the subject later on yeah no problem so a little bit about myself is um obviously as you've heard my name is hippa siraj i'm actually a youth advocate and i think i became something wrong with the yes. the voice okay something happened okay and yeah can you hear me yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so I have worked within my community as well. And currently, I am a student at uh, University of Toronto, and I'm studying uh, law. So my intuition is to go into uh, the legal field. And let's see where it takes me. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I I, I know uh, Adrian for a long time. And uh, he was our uh, pioneer uh, leader, youth leader, who in, even contested uh, politics as well. But, uh, you know, we have been doing uh, under VCC many, many activities and uh, he came out to be top uh, top leader in our youth leadership. Well, thank you. Okay. You're my flattery. Yeah. So I'm very, very delighted that you both are coming and this is the first time I'm meeting Hiba. So now let's go back to the what you have done recently because coronavirus really locked down everybody. Right. People lost their job. People yep. have, uh, because of some unemployment, some people already on the food bank. And where, where did you get this idea that even though we were going through Ramadan fasting because we're Muslim and you come up with this uh, meat supply, and I know you are opening a, a restaurant. And how did come this idea that you start distributing the, the, the halal meat first? And then who was with you and how did you come with this idea? Can you tell us? Yeah, sure. Because uh, like, uh, me, uh, along with a lot of my friends and a lot of community members, uh, used to go out to various shelters around GTA. Uh, Muslim shelters, non-Muslim shelters, uh, all kind of food banks, uh, not particularly in halal, like just to see where we can help. So everybody has a hobby. So uh, we kind of got together with my friends like uh, once a month or twice a month. And we're like, let's just go out and see what we can do and what we can do. Uh, like, how can we help? Uh, how can we be a better citizens? So we were going to downtown quite a bit and uh, dealing with mental shelters there a lot. Um, uh, the, the people uh, where we call them mental shelters, they are 
were suffering quite a bit because a lot of people wouldn't want to go there because there were a lot of homeless people there as well. And they were uh, the hit the most because in the time of a uh, Corona crisis, uh, there were a lot of uncertainty. It wasn't really a lack of resources or lack of food or lack of uh, funds. It was just uncertainty and people were afraid and they were scared and they didn't know what to do. So I start seeing extreme shortages in uh, of a food bank uh, in uh, downtown where there was no food, uh, extreme shortages in shelters. Um, people stopped giving. It's not because they did not want to give. It, they were just afraid to get out because they weren't sure what's going to happen. They were not sure about their own income, their own jobs, their own businesses and their health. And uh, it significantly dropped even on the street because a while back when the things are better, people will just go out on the street and give out jackets and donuts and like coffees and all that. So I kind of figured, I'm like, you know what, if these guys are hurting as much who are actually in a front face of poverty, like everybody knows where the shelters are, where the streets are. So how about the people uh, who are not willing to go to uh, shelters, who are just relying on friends and families and, you know, on a mediocre ways of getting, uh, you know, support because a lot of families, especially if they belong to Pakistani families or like South Asian families. So we have a lot of these kind of people who does not like to go to uh, shelters. Well, but you've been supplying to everybody, not specific to our community. Not, not at all. I've been giving out to everybody regardless of their religion, region and race. Uh, the reason I put a halal community in front of it because there was shortage of halal food as well. So a lot of our families who would depend on halal food and a lot of children who would depend on halal food would not grab the food so they would probably come and grab a, a box of an orange juice or they would just grab chips uh, which they would thought that is halal so that's why i put it out on halal meat saying that you know what we do have halal meat but it is for everybody okay now we're going to ask heba how did you get involved with this did you get involved with arian about this project or you were doing something differently so this project specifically, I did reach out to Arian about it, um, but in the past, like more in more recent news, I actually have done my own uh, food charity bank collection for any of the um, processed meat or any of uh, anything that really food banks do ask for. We went down to downtown, so not even just limited to the Mississauga region, but we went outside of our community and did uh, donate, collect and um, um, distribute the meat there. Um, but then I came across Aryan's page as well. So I did find it interesting because I've actually never heard of a toy drive here in my own city. Like we've heard many of the ones in the past for like sick kids and stuff like that. So I thought maybe I could get involved as well. And I learned quite a lot about marketing, quite a lot about the experiences and the excitement that it gives towards the people who are actually receiving it. So. I found that really great and very unique, I guess. Yeah, I and she did a couple of deliveries herself as well. I remember. Oh, that's, yeah. no, I, I really was tempted to come out and do something. The problem is I have a doc, two doctors in the house and they told me you are 68 <laughs> years old. You are not, you are too high risk to go out with, you know, with the diabetes and other stuff. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, they're saying the survival is about 10% uh, out of 90% is people can survive because of right. diabetes. So I was restricted to... Uh, to <laughs> but your mentorship and your prayers are enough, Tyre. Like yeah. you have taught us a lot, quite a bit all those, all these years. I then, uh, you know, I, I, because plus I'm working on MIC project. That's why my focus is still construction. And we just assume, uh, resumed the construction a couple of days ago. Right. And yeah. so as long as the support there. is there, I think that goes a long way. If the support is there, that we have the right people to do it, then it's yeah. Team. So one thing I tell you, Hiba, about Arian, I know him. He's very passionate, and he's so diverse. You can yeah. see him in a fashion magazine. <laughs> you can see him in the food business, <laughs> or humanitarian, or bringing you together. Yeah, there's His so call many different will rise. <laughs> His call will rise many youth to come out and help. Yeah. Yeah, our diverse community, and he's very known for that. Yeah. So I yeah. always counted on him. Only he had to say, "Can I? Can you please do it for me?" He he never say no. And no, he's of course not. About, he's an amazing person, and I think sooner or later people recognize that and they vote for him to so he become <laughs> a, a politician. <laughs> because Thank we you, need Tyler. people humanitarian like him uh, who you, are Tyler. contributing, and hope that you become a lawyer and sooner you will be able to do something. As well, sure. Arian, I always see in you the humanitarian factors there. What inspire you to do these things? 
can you tell me a little bit about secret of your life about here <laughs> atar bhai it's not as much of a secret i think it's just an inner calling because we all need to find ourselves uh, in peace and we all need to find something to do where we can give back to the community because uh, if you're thankful to god you're thankful to your parents you're thankful to your family and friends uh, then uh, the uh, the burden comes on us to give back just to make sure that we are thankful because uh, you cannot just say thank you to god and you and move on with whatever he has given That's to you right. or bless you right so how do you thank god like how do you give back to god like who has given you everything to begin with so you you help out his people you go out and you become a resource for god and you do whatever you can do and just make sure that they are good and in that matter you become very selfish because it's your own happiness as well uh because everybody enjoys doing something and alhamdulillah god has chosen me to do this that i enjoy it and i take great pleasure when i see a spreading smile uh you know dealing with toys when we see these kids with all these toys uh them celebrating eid and like all those things because um, you know th- this is what we need to do so i think this is what uh, drives me a lot uh just to see the happiness and just to see the smiles on people's faces you know is as a part of our uh, faith and also civic duty as a being a citizen to yeah. to help those who are in needs right you know lots of poverty and homelessness has caused problem and is duplicating the problem because of this coronavirus shutdown absolutely a lot of people lost their job and uh, uh, even though federal government has provided a lot of funding to support them there are many many program still reaching out and delivering some elderly people i'm sure you must have experienced elderly people so what if you ask heba when you go there what type of people that you met without naming any i don't want anybody to be named but in terms of uh, their uh, their uh, receiving the support from you and mm-hmm. how they feel did you make them happy do they was feeling comfortable yeah. that somebody is there to help Yeah so definitely that was one of the major things that actually drove me to be a part of such a initiative um i think even watching or seeing their reactions or seeing how they appreciate uh whatever we do or whatever is coming to them um i think even elderly people if you say in specific they appreciate it in the sense that because they think that they're more vulnerable just like you've mentioned before in the crisis that we're in right now so i think going out of our comfort zone and having someone to be there for you even if you don't know them on a personal basis i think it's really rewarding to be the person to be able to do that right so i thank god every day that i wake up some days and i get i have the opportunity to help someone because i always ask like i do want to be out there to help people and if it means that god gives it to me i do want to be able to give it to the people that i can help right no, so it, yeah it's very very self satisfying mm-hmm. that you are really helping out other people needy people and also we need to maintain the dignity of those people who are asking some help but they cannot go out openly because there are different type of people we have to make sure that our efforts are really helping other people out not just a photo app we yeah, talk absolutely. about me and Arian yeah. talk about the lots of people they give small donations they put picture everywhere yeah it's not for show i feel like it's more about the feeling that you get inside after doing yeah. something good right it makes you want to do way more than what you just did so most of so, so arian when you did this how much food really in terms of food or meals or delivery do you made can you give a different numbers because i know you were managing it uh, how on, many people got on, involved uh, and things like that uh, Well the way we were doing it is that uh, uh because of a corona protocol I could not have a lot of people in my kitchen so yeah. I was the only individual who was cooking in the kitchen so okay. I in past month and a half I have cooked uh, around 4300 meals wow wow yes <laughs> oh I know so I that's what I <laughs> I was looking at it today so we have cooked uh, 4300 meals uh, which we have pri- provided like uh, to us in different malls different places uh, individual families individual shelters and the way it would work is that I would get a call from a uh, in a particular spot uh, any shelter or food bank and they would say they were short and whatever they are short uh, I'll make it for them and then I put a public call out 
that if any volunteer can come forward and kindly take the food there. So it was a very much of a community-based uh, organization and community-based effort. So I cannot say I was doing it. Um, it was the entire community who was mobilized. And I would tell you that uh, whenever I put a post on Facebook, uh, within a minute, I would, I'm not even going to two minutes, say two minutes, I would have like replies like crazy, that like, we'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it. And sometimes people would get upset. They're like, why are we not getting an opportunity? Because we want to go out and serve. So that's the inspiration and passion our community has head and that would drive me more that you know what I want to do more as much as I can for our people that people were lined up from our community the funds were there everybody was calling asking what do you need uh, uh, you have to believe me that I would have to tell people that we don't need funds like we have come to that point I wow. you know I, I, I know that when I, I was trying to say this so we are not able to help much uh, right. basically to try to you know get our team to get involved VCC team to get involved with you guys Right. Just to help out. And uh, this is amazing because, you know, <clears throat> we have a month of Ramadan. We we were not able to go pray. We cannot go pray and also do travi and all that stuff. And the spirit is always there because it's a given month that where we, Holy Quran was completed and we want to give back to this. This is a Absolutely. month that we will give back and and. and and sacrifice, rehabilitate ourselves. So we are in a high spirit and, and, and goals of uh, correcting ourselves and also going out and helping. And this, with this uh, Ramadan, we couldn't do the travis mm -hmm. uh, in the masjid. And, and this created an environment where people were really giving out and giving donations. So I'm, I'm very so people, delighted uh, and very uh, proud that uh, you did that initiative. And Alhamdulillah, you would be very happy to see that our youth was like at the front phase, like the kind of work Hiba did, other people did, all the other volunteers came out, like they were doing crazy, like they were making deliveries uh, in Ajax and Whitby and Scarborough and Milton, like you name it, and the kids and people were going there. All young kids, 17, 18, 19, just got their licenses and running around <laughs> crazy GT and dropping things off. And so that makes me so happy and that makes our community looks so promising that finally we are about to give back to our society and community in yeah. positive manners and our youth is actually taking interest uh, in I such like matters. I want to add one point. Yeah, if I do be honest myself, I feel like yes. the fact that we're being so restricted to stay at home, we want to go out more. And if we're going out, then why not help other people, right? So that's Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is amazing because I, I tell you, because I, I remember one time that you opened that uh, youth, uh, uh, Pakistani youth. Uh, uh, United uh, Canadian uh, Pakistani volunteers. Jesus. Yes, man, there yes. were so many. And, and I know. We, we need people to volunteer for our uh, VCC program. And yeah. his call, and uh, I think Kulsum was also very active with Kulsum, you. At Kulsum time. was there, Yasser was there, Fan was there. I would name it. We had almost, Kesa Chaudhary Sahib was there from yes. Siddiqui, Amir Bhatt. So all the lawyers, all the doctors, engineers, police officers, army officers, you name it. Uh, like we had, alhamdulillah, over 300 volunteers who were brought into Pakistani community from GTA and they were supporting and helping everybody out. <laughs> no, this is amazing. So now, uh, Heba, what are your planning? Because with, you got a good experience now, marketing, mm -hmm. understanding the needs of the people, because you've chosen a profession law to serve the uh, consumers, public. Okay. Yeah. It requires lots of uh, passion and commitment. I think you're already showing a passion, care, uh, care and loving uh, for, for the people who yeah, need the needs. Definitely, so, definitely. So would this experience that you have uh, will help you and also you're going to continue to get involved with Arian and other uh, community charity work? Yeah, so I do believe that this is just the start of what I have in me. My potential, I feel like, can go a long way. And I'm not trying to be, like, uh, taking credits for everything that I've done so far. Definitely, there, there's there been a lot of people that played a part in all of the initiatives I've taken. Um, Aryan's taken part in a lot of um, interesting things like toy drives and other things within the community. And I also yeah. want to be a part of it, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with that said, I think that maybe if I am pursuing law, this will definitely be a token of, you know, understanding how society and our community works and things like what we need versus what we want. So I think that that's a huge factor and it will definitely help me out. So let's just see. Yeah, we, we uh, Arian knows that he was yeah. one of our leader from our, we have a VCC, Voice of Canadian Citizen, not for profit organization. We focus on youth leadership and he knows that. 
and he is right. one of the top leader in our team <laughs> and um, <laughs> and this is what we promote so if you are interested that there are lots of program that i will i will be doing it i need people like you to join us we are looking mm -hmm. for some directors in mm -hmm. a not for profit organization to encourage them to continue to contribute more and then it will be helpful to you on your profile as well yeah. so i'm going to go back to you arian <clears throat> this in ramadan i remember that we always did a to you did the toy drive and we collected uh, you know gift and uh, we, it was a lots of fun to go right. spend all evening all right. night there and do the sari this time yeah. i really missed that because yeah. we couldn't do it right? we all missed it yes yeah we really it was a right. i was so tempted with telling my wife that you know it's, right. it was a, a great experience that was the third or fourth. Uh, we did three before. This is six. This sixth year, that right? Sixth year. Wow. Sixth year. Yeah, it's a sixth year already. Time has flown like anything. Like you know. Yeah, yeah. I so, I shared your last event uh, on the on the show uh, right. last. Uh, you know that I share on Facebook actually. Yes, you did, and that's where I got, took all the pictures, and I started reposting them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because I didn't have a log of it. Yeah. So I I had them. I shared them. I said, wow. This was one of the best one. We have lots of people came up, member of parliament, provincial parliament, councillor, everybody showed up because this is where humanity matters. You know, you keep the religion behind. Humanity is becomes a religion because if you don't care for people and you don't support them and help them, then really the true virtue of faith is not being followed. Humanity right. is the main thing in any religion. Because God is only happy when you are helping a, a fellow hungry citizen. Absolutely. Faith doesn't tell you what faith that person is, is a human. And that's right. what is, I think, drives you. And, uh, and I really love about you because uh, you are always uh, taking the lead and taking initiative. So now, <clears throat> toy drive, we couldn't go. Right. So how many, how many toys did you collect this, uh, this year? Uh, and uh, how how did you distribute them? Did you go to the community? Did you go to churches? Or how you do that, please? Well, we collected uh, upwards of twelve hundred toys. Uh, wow. So it was like three trucks full. Uh, wow. And we and uh, Hiba made us uh, organize quite a bit toys because I could not do them <laughs> myself. So she came with her friends, and uh, they they literally organized. Uh, so you can tell them Hiba how you organize them and then can, I can go. Yes, yes, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, She's the one who did hands on. Right? Oh, that's good. That's good. I want to hear yeah. from so her. I brought yeah. along a couple of my youth uh, friends as well. You could say friends, but also people who are driven to, you know, be a part of this initiative. Um, I brought them along and um, it did last quite a bit, but I mean the whole process of organizing and saying, oh no, you know what, I think this is better off for this child this is better off for this one like picking and choosing it kind of gave a hand picked feeling of like you know this person is going to appreciate this and that so organizing itself did take a while but i i wouldn't like i would take it as a good thing because i learned quite a lot about like you know the needs of people of what they want and versus what we can provide them and it's just a fulfilling um idea and i guess working and like organizing the toys it really gave me that uh, assurance that I want to do this again and be a part of it again. So I would Inshallah. definitely like. Yeah, it. only thing I really miss your Halim and other stuff that we used to eat. Next yeah. time, yeah. How we're I, hoping how that if things get better uh, by October or November, yeah. then we can probably do a big Halim night, just like a Seri event in one of my places. So just yeah. to uh, bring the community together, because I love the way community comes together. I'll be first on that list because I'm interested. Ab absolutely, <laughs> you're the volunteer right there. But uh, yeah. going back to your question, uh, that how. Am, we, yeah, yeah, I have eaten your Halim on your, uh, your campaign one time, and it was amazing. Right. And, uh, Thank you. I, I'm going to be ordering your plate very soon. And any time, any time. So coming back <laughs> to the toys, as you were asking, so what we do is that we get requests from individual families and children. Yeah. So we call that Eat Wish List. Yeah. So each family or each children can uh, write their wish list saying that uh, what they're looking for eat, what would make their eat better. So <laughs> they could tell us that they need uh, churia, they need mendi, they need kamishalwars or shoes or sandals or any particular toy or any kind of toys of their ages. So we kind of uh, literally uh, set up a criteria with their age, gender and what they're looking for. So I have a few volunteers. Her name, uh, one of the main volunteers was coordinating please, please this. Please do name them. Uh, her name was uh, Shumaila Azim. Uh, so she's the one who coordinated between the families and uh, got all the information from them. And then she put everything in, uh, in charts and 
emailed us and then we forwarded that all that stuff to Hiba. And then Hiba took that data and then start organizing twice as per the wish and as per the list. And once we had everything organized, and there's a dear friend, Akif, uh, and uh, there's another guy for Jad and Adil. So they were coordinating, they were actually leading the volunteers team who were drivers. So I believe they play with the Dolphins cricket team here. Yeah. So I want to name there, if I'm not wrong, another dude uh, name is Adil. So they were the leaders who were actually uh, managing all the drivers all the way through Ramzan and prior to Ramzan and during Troy Drive. So it was a huge teamwork. So while uh, I was the face of it, uh, but uh, saying I was doing it is like not uh, fair to anybody else because there was a team and part everybody was playing. Uh, so this is how it worked, worked that all the information uh, people would contact me personally uh, because I wanted to keep their names and uh, addresses uh, you know, pretty much secret. So nobody knows who these people are uh, who are requesting all these things. And once I get all those things, uh, I would forward it to Shamila and she's the one who would organize those names, numbers and addresses and come in contact with them and ask them, what are you looking for? What do you need? How many things you need? How many meals do you need? You know, how many times a week do you need? So all that kind of a back office work she would do. And then after that, when it comes to Twy, uh, she collected the data and we forwarded it to Hiba and Hiba came with her friend and she organized all that. So once they all got organized, uh, then we had our youth leaders come forward and they're the one who were delivering them around. And they went all over GTA and delivered to the individual houses. Uh, Farooq Sadiqi is out today. Uh, he just went and he dropped to Nissa Homes Scarborough. Uh, we made another delivery to Nissa Homes Mississauga today. Uh, there's another couple shelter people who will be coming up and picking up toys tomorrow. So it's, it's a huge effort. I would say 50, 60 people involved. Okay, we're going to just uh, have a, in a few minutes, we're going to take a break and then we'll go and complete the, the whole, whole more question I have for you. Absolutely. My viewers, uh, you can see our youth are playing a significant role, humanitarian role, delivering food across GTA, not only Miss Saga, across GTA. During, even though they were fasting, they were in Ramadan, there were restrictions, they can't drink, they can't work, they were fasting but they were delivering food to provide hungry people, feed our fellow citizen with dignity and respect. And they kept all information confidential. So nobody knows where the food came from and who delivered it. So we are very, very proud to see our youth are playing a very significant role and, uh, and, and giving back to the society. This is all about us, our community and our humanitarian efforts by our community youth leadership. So very soon we're going to be starting uh, our, uh, we're going to get back to the program. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to take a small short break for now, uh, and then we'll get back to you. This is Community Coffee Talk. My name is Tahir Qureshi. I'm your host. Dame Drops told us how good Popeye's buttermilk biscuit shrimp is without us even asking. Mmm, so crunchy, buttery, just like those biscuits. Are you hungry yet? Eight shrimp, a side, and a biscuit for just six ninety nine. At KM9000, sang about Popeye's buttermilk biscuit shrimp because he was feeling it. Shrimp, 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 shrimp. Shrimp, 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 shrimp. Eight shrimp, a side, and a biscuit for just six ninety nine. Now, buy a house in the house or invest in the house with ease. Because Sunrise Homes proudly present Station Towns in Barry near Go Station. Booking is only $5,000. And then, only $1,250 in the house with easy installments. Station Towns in Barry from high 400,000s. With assignment. So call Vajid Malik with exclusive platinum access at 416-827-3333. 416-827-3333. Wajid Malik, trusted name in the community.
Welcome to, to Community Coffee Talk. I'm your host at Awas Entertainment. And we are speaking to our youth who have been doing a tremendous work, humanitarian efforts in our community, uh, Arian and also Heba. So we were talking about how you did the distribution of uh, the food because of coronavirus, they were concerned. So what precautions you guys took to make sure that nobody get infected and when you are doing your humanitarian effort. So, so I'm going to ask you, Arian, what kind of instruction yeah. you give it to them or how did they protect themselves okay. before? To the start day? with, like, uh, I wouldn't allow anybody to come in the kitchen or in the restaurant when we were cooking. Okay. So I was the only one who was doing it, even though it was difficult, but uh, just to keep the precaution and make sure that the environment is as healthy as possible and minimum exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we were doing that whenever we would go or I would go buy food, so I would not let anybody else buy food. So I would go buy food myself and we would quarantine it for two days, two, three days, because it was on the air. Nobody knew how long the bloody virus is, you know, last. Somebody would say four days, somebody said three hours, someone <laughs> says two hours. So I'm like, okay, you know what, let's give it 48 hours. So we would buy all the stuff like 48 hours in advance. Uh, we quarantine them in uh, one of the corner of the restaurant just to make sure that everything is gone. Bring it up, clean it up, wash it up, and then we cook it myself. And then I, I would pack it myself. And then we had double door in front of my restaurant, so we would put all the meals uh, in between double doors. And then the people, the drivers, when they come out, uh, uh, all the drivers would have all the instructions in place, uh, the addresses in place. Uh, we would not give them the names of the uh, people, so we would just give them a, a delivery one, two, three, four, five, and they would have that. Okay, I'm here for delivery one. That's the address, and we leave it between two doors. So one door is closed, and then they open the door from outside. They would grab all the food, put in their car, and obviously they're wearing gloves and mask and sanitizer that are in place. Right. And then when they go to deliver it, they will put it outside of their house, and they'll just come back in their car. They would call me. Uh, I'll call the guy, and I'm like, come open the door and get the food. So that's how. Uh, the drivers don't know that who's picking up the food and the people who are picking up the food don't know who's delivering. So there's none of that, uh, you know, shyness or hesitation in the middle and people would just grab that food and go inside. So this is how we try to keep it as safe as possible. I Wonderful. think that's, that's a new way for Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Heba, when you were picking up the food yeah. and you were delivering the food to, to the people, are you wearing the gloves and, and how did you do that? So definitely, yeah. Um, going forward, let's talk about uh, when I actually donated meat to the uh, community uh, food drive that we had. Um, when we went out, we definitely did wear masks, gloves. We took our safety precautions as well because I have this understanding if we don't show that we're taking the same amount of uh, caution towards whatever is going on, I feel like then other people won't as well, right? So setting an example goes a long way. And when you're part of an initiative, you want to make sure if you're being seen or not even if you're being seen, but for the safety of others as well, you want to make sure that everyone around you is safe with what you're doing, right? The whole point of it is to help people. And if I can't do that, I want to make sure that I'm doing it safely, right? So we did have masks, we did have gloves, and we did have sanitizers. We had breaks in between, so <laughs> we made sure so we were okay. How, how many cities did you deliver? I just asked a question yeah. before so, I go back. So far, I've done two, but the plan is to go ahead and help frontline workers as well. I did speak to uh, the local MPs here. Um, I did coordinate with them. I'm part of youth councils here in Mississauga, and I'm also part of other platforms that I can use my, I guess, youth advocate skills to go ahead and enter different regions of the GTA. So I also did um, Toronto as well, downtown. And uh, with, I guess, my work as well, I've done it downtown, I've done it uh, Scarborough, and I've done it Mississauga. So we're implementing ideas, and it's still going. So we're planning on going further, I guess. Well, we're going to be inviting you for our, uh, our uh, VCC platform to speak mm -hmm. to youth. And we have, a, we have a chapters in many, many cities. Mm -hmm. And we can use your expertise uh, to give you the opportunity to grow your leadership and mm -hmm. also uh, communicate with the people. We do a lot of event, but because this, this year coronavirus and all that has shut down everything. So yeah. I'm going to go back to Ariane. I, I tell you, you've done a remarkable job. Yeah. This is what is all about being a good human being, being uh, giving, you know, giving back to the community. And always I say, you take with you what you leave behind, your legacy. Absolutely. And at my age, I think like this because 
you never know when your time will up. But uh, and and I see those goodness of heart, the effort, the energy. It's not easy, especially when coronavirus people are told to stay home, and you, our youth, our children, taking this risk to go out to feed hungry people across GTA is admirable, commendable. I salute you all for all these efforts that you have done because you make all of us proud. This is a remarkable thing you did because you have no idea. My own son, my doctor's son and his wife, they won't let me leave, leave the house. I three times attempted that I will go out and my wife says she will call the police if you go, you go out. You know <laughs> why? I'm sneaking out. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> yeah. The reason I'm saying is because of health, because I have a little health issues and age right. factor, exactly. and especially with diabetes. If you have a, a diabetes and if you get this coronavirus, survival is, is only 10% out of the 100. Mm -hmm. So that's so bad. It is very dangerous. Um, may Allah it's keep you blessed. Dangerous. And the problem is this enemy is in the air. Nobody sees it. There are different opinions from health specialists, doctors, scientists, and you can see the, uh, you know, warning and killing in, in, in the United States. Over 100,000 people died because of this coronavirus. Right. So even though we are losing up the business, there is still going on. Spread is still going on. We still right. have to adapt to a new way of doing business. We Absolutely. Have to think, think about it. What is success? Now you were opening up a restaurant, and now you have to think about it. How I'm going to operate this restaurant for the future? Right. How many Absolutely. people will come to the business? Uh, we have many, many seminar on my other program, and we talk about the business is not going to be the same again. We have to That's learn new hard. skill set, new strategy to achieve success, especially the restaurant. Hotel, hospitality industry hit very, very bad. Absolutely. Did. So we what are you planning to do? Because I know you have to make money. To you, you have some restaurants. Right. How so basically, basically, you you just need to adopt and overcome. Like That's the simplest thing. There's nothing else you can do or say or sit back and cry. A restaurant business is always going to be in business. People would need food to eat. How they're going to eat it is different. How we're going to sell it is different. So when the time comes, and especially being in a tourism or hospitality or restaurant business, we know that the lifespan of one idea is not more two and a half year to three years. So every three year we have to reinvent ourselves. So even though it sounds and it looks very devastating, but it's not very new to people in hospitality business uh, because we have to, you know, every two year, uh, two and a half years, there's a new trend, there's new food, there's new decorations, uh, you know, there's new overhaul. So, and, and we need to make sure that we work with people thinking in their mind. Uh, right now, uh, as per my information, um, we know that they're gonna be opening up the patios first. Um, then we probably go to 50% capacity or 30% capacity. So we just need to uh, adopt to the patio system. A lot of people who don't have patios, obviously uh, they'll be struggling and they would have to come down to what do you call 30% uh, or 50% capacity. Uh, but as they're saying that 85% um, of the restaurant businesses won't be able to survive this. Because yeah. so that is the toughest thing. Um, so a lot of people I feel sorry for like who were they like probably had only a couple restaurants or who were only, you know, uh, not equipped to deal with certain things because average uh, person in a business here has 16 to 18 days of backup. Like after 18 days, they run out of their funds here. We're and here we're talking about months after month and after month. So it's mm -hmm. very uncertain. And that's why we see a lot of people, uh, a lot of restaurants are closing. Hospitality businesses are closing. Uh, there's not as such of a support from the government either at this moment because uh, whatever the policies they're making right now, they are not really supporting ground level. Uh, they look and they sound good and great, um, you know, in articles or, and in interviews. Uh, but when you actually come to the ground reality, they're not supporting much. Hence, we have a lot of businesses closing. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm in a position where I see I can survive this and uh, my other restaurants are doing well. Um, my third one, which is a bigger one, so uh, if I would, if you would ask me how am I trying to cope with it, so I'm pu putting a drive-in theater there. So that's the best I could do and come up with, because that's the season is there. <laughs> no, I I really admire you that uh, you started to open uh, a new uh, new restaurant, right. and this uh, coronavirus hit you, and then 
instead of feeling bad about it, you took, converted this to, into a humanitarian effort, uh, serving the food and meat, halal meat and other things to the people. That's innovation and a new strategy, energy, converting negativity to the positive approach. So I'm very proud of you, Thank what you, you did, how you organize it, and you made a big difference in human life. So as we are moving forward, there, there are um, uh, things will happening. So now we're going to be sort of uh, going into a, a closing uh, remarks. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, I'm going to ask Hiva, how are you going to use this experience that you have, that you have learned and, and do to convert into something that is continue, ign ignite you, and you are engaged now and bring that energy and continue to do this because the profession that you have chosen is directly impact the human human life. Yes. So how this is going to benefit you and then you can uh, give your thought, uh, your experience. So you have two steps. Talk about the experience, then how you encourage youth leadership in our diverse community mm -hmm. to get involved and do things and which areas they can help. So definitely, that's a very good question because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing with all of this in hand. Definitely, it is a token of something I learned from. Um, every experience that I have had in the past with uh, taking um, participation in all of these initiatives that I've done or been a part of for yeah. the least, I would say that I've gained a lot of different um, views and perspectives of how this initiative can help the humanity, uh, humanitarian level. And yeah. for that being said, I feel like if I am taking it towards my uh, career that I've chosen or want to pursue in the legal field, I want to say that I do also have a background in politics as well. I'm doing a minor in political science. So I do have the verbal skills in that sense. So when I say I am a youth advocate, I don't just mean it as like I do participate in events here and there. I actually do have a strong idea and perspective of where I want to reach. And with that being said, I would say that for now, I would tell you that I have a lot of things planned ahead and I would say stay tuned and come in this journey with me and with all the help and support I can get from everyone. I do appreciate it and I'm willing to give back to my community and maybe pe more people along the way, right? I learn from them, they learn from me. And if I can give help to them as well, then why not? So I appreciate Fantastic. that. Fantastic. I'm going to invite you to join our Voice of Canadian Citizens Youth Leadership. Mm -hmm. We have I noticed that you are only friend with the Aryan, but <laughs> social media is very powerful. Yeah. And I we need people like you to join our board. Definitely. We, we, I actually and yeah. then you be able you mm -hmm. will have a platform to use your energy and you can help. And uh, Aryan is uh, one of the pioneer leader in our community mm -hmm. that see. we work together and and he demonstrated his leadership. And I thank yeah. you very much for joining me. Now, Aryan. Uh, I thank you very much for joining, but I want you to give your final message based on your experience and the diverse, uh, diverse condition that you have and you went ahead and you help families and you want to give message to the youth in our community to, to get involved in humanitarian efforts. So if you want to say something, you have two minutes. Well, I would just say thank you, Tahir Bhai, for the opportunity and always being there to mentor us, advise us, suggest us, you know, because we need the path to walk and you guys have walked the path already. So thank you for showing us the route. Um, and welcome. and I really thank God uh, that the God has given me an ability to walk the path and just to see uh, and perhaps create a path as well. Um, at the same time, very thankful to Hiba and you know everybody else uh, who were part of this journey and like who joins because because this is not a one day thing, this is not a one event thing, this is a one not one project thing. It's a lifestyle and it's in your heart, and they keep coming as the as the need rises, right? Uh, so so to, uh, it could be another project tomorrow, it'd be something else day after tomorrow. And I'm just thankful to each and every person like who've been helping me all through for many, many years, including yourself, um, to come out on my one call. Like, you know, I put out a call that I need a cause, I need it done. And Alhamdulillah, God has given me that kind of a respect in a community that those things get done. And I'm very happy that this year was a bit different because I saw a lot of our youth coming forward in this crisis. And that was very promising because that's when 
make you feel happy knowing that what you're doing is not going to waste. Uh, it's a flame is going to get passed on to somebody else. And that's the happiest moment of your life. And this is the first time I was the oldest one in the whole group. And <laughs> not like me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm so, so this was the happiest time because I was the eldest and uh, I was very happy to see our kids coming forward, our community coming, because I was the one who'd been always complaining this, that I don't see youth, I don't see people, I see discouragement, I see disengagement. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we are being engaged and our kids are coming forward. And I'm hoping the people like yourself and other, like, you know, uh, they can uh, back these kids up, show them a right path, show them a right path. So once they are ready to lead, uh, in the real world, like out of our community. So they're equipped with what they need, just like any other community. Like, you yes. know, they train their kids, they train their children to come forward. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I hope and pray to our community that let's not miss this chance. We had this chance a while back when we had a huge group of youth and yeah. somehow we missed out on it. Inshallah, Alhamdulillah, we again have that youth. And I encourage everybody, it's only two years in election. I'm like, just go put your name on the ballot. Let's see what happens. At least gain the experience out of it. Yeah, you know, go kick yeah. it, and these people have it. Like you can see people when you meet them. That is in them. You can't. You don't create these things. It's no. in them. And mashallah, you speak to Hiba. You see the way she talks, the way she works, like her passion. Uh, <laughs> among with other friends we have, like you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, they're very talented, and that's what shows and promises me that our community is going to be an amazing place. Give it a few years. Yeah, no, I I really thank you uh, very much, both of you. Uh, you are very inspiring personality and uh, Adrian, I know you a long time, so I'm very happy to know Heba now. And Absolutely, because he talked about youth. I'm like, let me bring you a real youth leader. I'm like, <laughs> That's right. I'm like this will... is how the youth leaders look because we usually yeah. confuse you there, right? <laughs> so viewers, um, you have seen uh, our two guest panelists, Adrian Amr and Heba Siraj, youth leadership. They've been doing humanitarian efforts within our community, and I'm so delighted to know that they have ignited our youth to get involved with the community effort and humanitarian help fellow citizen. We also take this opportunity to thank all those who have delivered foods and toys uh, to the public across GTA. They are commendable. They are silent soldiers. You don't see them, but they have worked together with Arian, Heba, and other teams behind the scene. We commend them. We salute them for their generosity in helping uh, bring food and toys, donating and, and delivering in this coronavirus when this was spread of virus and they took precautions They put their life on, on, life, uh, on risk, but help feed the hungry families and Canadians. We also take this opportunity on, the beha on behalf of OWAS entertainment and community coffee talk, uh, all the health specialists, doctors, science, uh, scientists, nurses, police officers who are doing their best to put their life online to protect our fellow citizen. We salute them, we love them, and we also always care for our fellow citizens. So if you are in a position to help feed the hungry people, Arian and other food banks are there to help. So please donate generously. And we take this opportunity to thank everybody. I thank you, Arian. I thank you, Eba. And may God bless you. Remain safe. May God bless Canada. Thank you very much for the participation. Thank Bye you, for now for me. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye.